look at Yuan Kim, our electronic shop uh, along the Ying Dao, eh? oh, they are very good in, in events. Eh? From time to time, you see them running events. Now, Tech Holidays is coming. Events for Tech Holidays. Sometimes they have a huge bandwidth. Okay, how many shopping malls? Because there are a few things here. Contract management, uh, tenancy policy, marketing plan, and so on. Right, this is just to show you the type of processes that we can permit and grow. How do we make sure that the employees, that everyone in the company, very important. Especially for state-owned companies in Malaysia, the staff, sometimes even senior managers, do not resolve a location. As I mentioned, a lot of management time is required to implement. If you don't have that, right, the management team pull in and pull out from the program. Right? One day you say you are in the balance scorecard team, next month you say sorry, you are in the Six Sigma team. <laughs> Three months later you say no, we are in a PQM team. Now, okay, totally change. How do we implement that? <coughs> we do not have enough terminology, the meaning, not defined properly. Okay? There are a lot of terms, terminology. It's going to result in quarrel. You go for a meeting, everyone will not agree on what those terms mean. So it's very important to do that. Uh, BJ can come on board and uh, tell us exciting things about leadership. Right? Thank you so much. Và không để quý vị chờ lâu hơn, bây giờ là phần trình bày chuyên đề của hôm nay Con đường nhanh chóng dẫn đến của ông Ryan Radowski, giảng viên chuyên nghiệp và là thành viên của International Coaching Federation. Is that okay? The back? All right. Wow, we heard a lot of challenges for... Uh, uh, we had the strategy communication, we have people's willingness or difficulty in learning, uh, exchange rates. Maybe we should just quit. Go home. <laughs> it seems a little difficult, but I think the key to it lies in uh, leadership. And um, a top priority, I think, for all of our organizations is that with strong leadership, it works on both the macro level so that we can set the direction for the organization, we can ensure our strategy is developed and communicated, and it works on the micro level. When we're developing our leaders, as Mr. Wu mentioned this morning, it's very hard to attract people or to keep good people. When we invest in this leadership, it works on the micro level of our business as well. We attract the biggest or the best in our uh, in our um, uh, industry to come work for us. From 13 billion dollars market capital to over 500 billion. Phenomenal. Mike wants to change the reputation of his entire country. So this is the kind of power that um, great leaders can have. What do you as a leader want? And what do your other leaders in your organization really focus on? Because we know if you have negative leaders, they can also have tremendous effect. Remember when we had that oil spill a few months back and we saw the leader of BP? That wasn't a very positive experience. Sony, which went from being the world's leader in electronics with a leader that failed to commit to innovation and quality and leadership in their industry, has become a company now that's more famous for batteries that catch on fire. Oh, I don't know how this one got up, but the list is too big to talk about. So, what are the keys to successful leaders? Vision, planning, passion, belief, commitment, and very important, courage. I'm going to talk about each of these six points uh, very little. We all have heard the importance of having vision that you need to be able to have strategic goals. Crystallize what exactly do you want? Why do you want it? And I love to work with my clients and asking them why they don't already have it. 
because we find that sometimes they maybe have another vision that's getting in their way. So our leaders have to be able to crystallize what they want. Can they see it? Is it a sprint? Are you going to make your business super fantastic in a very short time? Or is it something you're going to reputation and quality? If you don't have balance in your business, and we see this, it's, it's notorious for new companies. 80%, we've all heard this, 80% of new businesses fail in the first five years. Of the companies that survive, another 80% of them will fail in the next five years. And that's about not having a proper plan. These are companies that go from marketing to service delivery to marketing. It's not balanced. We also have to have balance in our own life. And this, was, this one is very powerful for me. This was a lesson that I learned um, in my early 30s. I was building my first company. It was quite nice. I'm from Canada. I had this uh, retail chain. And uh, things were going pretty well. Required uh, for me to be sustainable in my own business. Scorecard. But it's, it's, it's critical in an organization. And passion to really make their organization a success. What drives your leader? This Zuckerberg, the guy who starts Facebook. This is a couple of years ago when he was only like uh, 23 years old, I think. And Microsoft at the time offered him $3 billion cash for his company. The best leader possible. Work that we uh, that we get into when we're working with our leaders individually or in some of our workshops, but it really is about you getting to know your, what school taught you, but what's important to you. That's where passion comes from. Also, building passion in your team. Then get good at what you do. And when this happens, you get belief from others. Belief in your vision, critical for, for leaders. Belief in others. None of us are going to build a company entirely on our own. There's some things that we talk about in some of our other uh, uh, workshops as well. And it's about how do we and how do we build that effective team that's going to support us to achieve these goals, to reach our vision. As just how am I going to go up that hill one more time? How do we find the energy? How can we stay committed that even though we have difficulties, and you'll have difficulties, this, does anyone know who this is? Julie Moss. A triathlon is a little race, a sporting event. Not so difficult. You just go to a nice uh, sea or lake and you swim. That's only two thirds. After you get off your bike, you run a marathon, 42 kilometers. That's an Ironman triathlon. I was watching television because I wasn't a triathlete and I saw this woman. She was 200 meters from the finish line. She had swum, swam four kilometers, rode her bicycle 180, and ran 42 kilometers. 200 meters left to go over the finish line like this. She came in second. There was 10 feet, three meters commitment for leaders, non-negotiable. Courage. Courage is big, and courage also, I see culturally, is a little bit different. Courage for leaders, for example, in, I'm from Canada, but when I work in the United States, to kids in school who are taught to say, I am an Amer, I can. Emphasis on I can. 
So you have this attitude that you can go and take risks. And it's okay to fail. And if you fall down, you get up. When I started working for the last 10 years in Asia, I realized, oh, that's not necessarily the way it is out here. With courage to take risks, and the courage that there's no one to blame. Leaders cannot blame. And you will get boxed in the face somehow. Something is going to happen. You might have one of your key employees leave and start. They have quality issues with your customers. You will need to have the courage to stand up, make a decision, say yes, say no. If we have those in your leaders, these issues that we've been talking about all morning, they're still going to be there, but at least we're going to be able to deal with them in a positive way. One thing that we do at uh, Beautiful Mind is we have developed a program that talks about some of these things. Uh, we have some information available that we can, you can pick up from one of the tables about the leadership development coaching programs that we do. Um, I think that uh, I'm very much. Đầu tiên xin được đặt câu hỏi cho ông Martin. để truyền thông chiến lược hiệu quả trong bối cảnh doanh nghiệp Việt Nam phải cạnh tranh và thay đổi liên tục. Question. Uh, it's very difficult question. The question was about how to improve the strategic communication. To me, 